Wow, this is not a dress rehearsal. It's the only one we get in this human suit. So it's up to us to make it the best life possible. And each and every one of us, all day long, are using our creative energy, known as our thoughts, our feelings, and our intentions, to actually create our life. And so when we examine or look consciously at the things that we are creating or that we have already created, we say, hmm, you know, maybe I want to change that. Maybe we can look at some of the areas in our life that we really want to up-level, that we really want to improve. Maybe as you're gazing over your life, you'd like to have a job that's more fulfilling. Or you'd like more relationships that are loving and supportive. Or maybe you'd more, want more vibrant health and well-being. So as you're thinking about this during this time together, just allow one of them to bubble up because it'll be very expansive for you. Because we each get 60,000 thoughts a day. And most of them are the same 60,000 thoughts we thought yesterday. And we really want to examine the thoughts that we're thinking, the ones that we're giving our attention to. Because most people spend more time focusing on what they don't want than what they do want. And then they get frustrated that those things they don't want are actually creating in their life. And so... When you think about what life is really for, you know, is it to work a job for 40 plus years and doing something that's not fulfilling just to feel safe? Or is it something that you can really grasp and say, okay, if I know that these are the things that I desire in my life, then what attention do I need to place on those things? And so, as you're looking at your life and you're saying, okay, what would I love to create for my life? And we think about some of the areas and some of the ways that we make our decisions. Most of them are from our upbringing. And our, our family, our well-meaning parents, teachers, friends that are telling us what we should do or where we should live, or how we should think. And the truth of the matter is, we have to stop shooting on ourselves. We have to start taking responsibility for the thoughts that we're thinking and the choices that we're making and where they're coming from. You know, are they coming from our logic reasoning mind, or are they coming from our trusting knowing heart? The one, the part of us, that really does light up when we're doing something we really love. So as you gaze over your childhood and you think about some of the things that you just lost track of time doing, you know, what did you really enjoy that when you were doing it, you were having so much fun, you didn't want to go home for dinner, you wanted to keep doing what you were doing, and it was something that when you were doing it, you felt a sense of aliveness in you. And for me, I loved playing Barbies, I loved playing teacher, and then when I was 10 years old, I was going for my sewing badge in Girl Scouts. And as soon as I learned how to sew, I mean, anything creative was really fun for me anyway, but the moment I learned how to sew, it was like, that was it. I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to study fashion design. I wanted to, you know, travel the world and create beautiful clothing. And my parents were incredibly supportive. They bought me a sewing machine and I made all my own clothes and helped with the family sewing and all of those things. And so when I was going off to college, I was so excited to be following my heart. So when you think about the things in your life that you've actually listened to the voice of your own heart, like what it is that you would truly love, that's being really authentic with who you are and what's important to you, what matters most to you. And so I was away at school, and it was, um, it was, I was in summer school, and I get a knock, knock, knock at the door. 
and it's a cute boy asking me out on a date. And I had just come back from a run. I um, was studying for a psychology test, and, but there was a cute boy asking me out on a date. So I had a decision to make, and we're all making decisions all day long. And I was 20 years old. I jumped on the back of that motorcycle in 10 seconds flat, and off we went. We were, went to a beautiful, fun concert, met with friends. It was a beautiful summer evening. And as he was taking me home, we hit a pothole in the road, and I flew 60 feet in one direction. He flew 60 feet in the opposite direction, and the motorcycle flew 60 feet in another direction. And by the grace of God, a professor was driving around in his four-wheel drive Jeep and saw Mark's red baseball cap sitting on a dirt mound and called 911. And when the paramedics arrived, they found Mark first. And uh, he's no longer, he did not survive. And they scoured the area and they found me in a pile of rubble. We were in an area under construction. And they scooped me up and put me in the back of a helicopter and flew me to St. Louis University Hospital, where the doctors spent almost three months putting Humpty Dumpty back together again. I had broken every bone in my face. My skull was cracked, my nose was torn, my lung was collapsed, my back was crushed. Not a pretty picture. And my family came and loved me and sat by my side and took care of me during that, you know, that first challenging part of the journey. And when they released me from the hospital three months later, they told me three things. You'll never walk again. You'll never have children. And we did the best we could putting your face back together from a photograph only time will tell. And even though I was so grateful, it, it was as if they were talking about someone else's life. And I had such faith and so many dreams for my life that I didn't accept that as my reality. And even though I had thanked them for everything they did, I knew I'd always wanted to be a mother. I knew that I always wanted to be healthy. I was a runner and a hiker, and I always wanted to, you know, be healthy in my body. And I was in fashion design school, and I was a girl. I wanted to be pretty again. So I held on to those dreams, and I let those dreams decide the direction of my life. And even though it was challenging and difficult, and every single day I took one more step in the direction of my dreams, and one more step. And this is a picture of part of my family. Uh, on my 21st birthday, I had, I had a full body cast and uh, many, many facial surgeries and a crooked smile that was so filled with gratitude. I was so grateful to be alive, to be moving in the direction of my dreams and having my family and my loved ones near me. And about a year later, I was walking with just a quad cane and I went back to college to finish my degree and about a year later, year and a half later, I met my father's, uh, my children's father, and our daughter was born a year later, Stephanie, and Trevor was born a year and a half after that. And I jokingly tell them that I loved them into existence because I believe that the power of love is the most powerful creative force known to man. And so, we get to look at what it is that we are loving into existence in our lives. What are you putting your positive life force energy towards? What are you opening up your heart to say, I would love this. I would love 
deep and meaningful relationships. I would love fulfilling work that makes me jump out of bed, excited to start my day. I would love to feel vibrantly healthy in my body, no matter what age I am, no matter where I am in my health journey. And we get to decide. The word decision, the Greek root is to cut off from any other possibilities. And so when we decide on something, we put our full power, our full force energy into it. And we're working with this beautiful infinite intelligence called the universe. And as we are aligning ourselves with our desire, we're actually asking the universe to support us. And so as you look at some of the areas in your life that you really want to up-level, that you really want to pour your love and attention into, just asking yourself, what would that look like? What would that feel like? How would my life improve and change and up-level? So this is a picture of my children and I on the top of Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa, one of our many adventures. Um, I'm so grateful to be um, so healthy and active. And it was the intention of my heart to continue to follow that dream, to follow my heart and let love be my guide. And as you are looking at the areas of your life and realizing this isn't a dress rehearsal, none of us is getting out alive. Like, this is it. This is the one. And so what is it that you would love to bring into your life? Um, I also come from a large family. <laughs> this is... Uh, my, all of my siblings and my nine nieces, my seven nieces and nephews and my two children, this picture was actually taken uh, at my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. That's now almost 15 years ago. I just spent the week with my entire family in Chicago uh, celebrating my brother's life. And it was cut short. But he knew that this is not a dress rehearsal. He lived full out. He was a brilliant musician. He was a gifted artist. He um, was just such a people person and a family man, family above all else. And as we just celebrated his life and recognized how he truly did play full out, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful opportunity. So I want you to ask yourself, what would you love? Using the power of love, which is expansion, it's also, there's many faces of love. Creativity, harmony, peace, joy, all the things that allow you to live love and above. And there's also fear, and many faces of fear. Doubt, worry, um, resentment, animosity, not enoughness. That's probably the number one that really holds us back from living a life we would truly love. And because this is not a dress rehearsal, I also want you to remember that it's never too late to be what you might have been. It's always, I had a 94-year-old client that in, she wanted to do something that was a legacy of love that she could leave behind. And she started a mortgage um, company for uh, veterans of war. And she had that for a couple of years before she passed away and helped 14 families get their first homes. So I don't know what your dream is, but you can live your legacy of love right now and allowing yourself to let love lead you. Follow your heart. Love is the language of the heart. And this is the longest journey you'll ever take, is the 18 inches between our head and our heart. And our logic reasoning mind has talked us out of most of our dreams. So my invitation to you today is to listen to the voice and the wisdom 
of your own heart that knows what you want, that knows what you desire, and take one step every day in the direction of that dream becoming your reality. And as we are here reimagining a world that works for everyone, we remember that imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's coming attractions. So what are the things in your life that you can imagine in a bigger way, that you can allow yourself to dream, allow yourself to dust off some of those thoughts, those ideas that you had when you were young and you just really haven't taken the steps forward. And just give yourself permission to really let love be your guide and let your heart lead your way so that you can truly live a life that you love and know that this is not a dress rehearsal. From my heart to yours, have a beautiful and blessed day.